Coming to you live from the World News Headquarters of the DeMont Television Network, it's Countdown. We bring it to you live. There are no recreations at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific each weeknight. Tomorrow night, my special guest in his first appearance since our first show, official Countdown provocateur, Michael Moore. This rhetorical question is perhaps self-answering. A protest called Occupy Wall Street, trying to underscore and gum up the financial industry's influence on who's rich and who's not. Why wouldn't that get extensive news coverage? In our third story, after five straight days of sit-ins, marches, and shouting, and some arrests, actual North American newspaper coverage of this, even by those who have thought it farce or failure, has been limited to one blurb in a free newspaper in Manhattan and a column in the Toronto Star. It started Saturday when about a thousand people marched into New York's financial district to express their anger over how the financial system treats the majority of Americans, what they call the 99 percenters, and to draw attention to the misdeeds of Wall Street. They have been confronted with an ever-increasing police presence, which is blocking certain streets and attempting to keep protesters away from the stock exchange itself. While the protesters are peaceful, tensions are beginning to rise. According to the group's own website, seven protesters were arrested yesterday, with four more being arrested today. The police have resorted to using a 166-year-old law, which bans the wearing of masks in a gathering of two or more people, except at masquerade parties. Simple solution to that crap. Call those protests outdoor masquerade parties. While the majority of the media is ignoring the public uprising, it is not going completely unnoticed. Take, for instance, Yahoo, which blocked any email containing the group's website with the message, Suspicious activity has been detected on your account. Yahoo later acknowledged the error, tweeting, We apologize for block blocking OccupyWallStreet.org. It was not intentional and caught by our spam filters. It is resolved it may be a residual delay. Joining me now is a veteran of many residual delays, Will Bunch, senior writer for the Philadelphia Daily News and author of The Backlash, The Right-Wing Radicals, High-Def Hucksters, and Paranoid Politics in the Age of Obama. Good evening, my friend. Hey, Keith. It's great to see you again. And mine. My pleasure. Uh, before the blackout questions, who are these uh, protesters? Are they the unemployed new graduates or disenthralled Wall Streeters? Who we got out there? Well, there was a great line in The Guardian, which, of course, is a British publication, mm -hmm. so they're actually covering it there. <laughs> and uh, and uh, they, they, they called, uh, they quoted one of the people calling themselves the underemployed and the overeducated. And I, I thought that was a pretty good line. Uh, many of them are young, but not all of them. Some of them are in their 50s uh, or older. Um, uh, they were uh, drawn by a couple groups. One is a magazine that I was not familiar with before, but it's very popular in Canada called Ad Busters. It's mm -hmm. a liberal magazine uh, that I think came up with the idea for this event. And then uh, the group Anonymous, which is uh, very controversial for its hacking activities, uh, promoted it too. But mainly uh, it's been promoted on Twitter and uh, Facebook, but especially Twitter, not unlike the protests we saw in the Arab Spring overseas. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's very similar in that regard. Short term goal is what? Obviously, they're not going for the same thing they were going for in Tahrir Square? I think, I think the short-term goal, well, I think like in Tahrir Square, I think people showed up there because they were just unhappy with mm -hmm. uh, the regime, and I think that's what's happening here, too. I think uh, when you talk to people, mainly they're just frustrated, they're, they're angry, uh, many of them are unemployed or that they, you know, can't make it in this economy. Uh, uh, they're the uh, part of the 99 percenters, but they're the part that are dealing with unemployment and things like that. And, um, I, you know, I think that's been a problem, I think, for the protest. I mean, I think, I think they can and should refine their goals, uh, and, and perhaps they will over time if they can keep it going. But right now, I think it's just a sign of the deep unrest and anxiety that a lot of people are feeling in this country. Well, apparently they're not going to be able to refine their goals based on reading bad reviews in, you know, the, uh, the, uh, um, the movie or, or protest critics of the New York Times. Uh, it, I'm going to ask uh, our director, Chris Belante, to show those still pictures again and, and give you an alternate meme as to what they came from. So the, the crowd shots especially, Chris. Why, why isn't any major news outlet covering this? Do we have the crowd, the crowd shots by any chance? Just to give that dimension, that one, that's the one. If that's a Tea Party protest in front of Wall Street about Ben Bernanke uh, putting stimulus funds into it, it's the lead story on every network newscast. How is that, that disconnect possible in this country today with so many different outlets and so many different ways of transmitting news? It is a real disconnect. And, and the New York Times, I mean, this is the hometown newspaper of Wall Street, and there have been no print articles in the New York Times to date uh, with these people camping out down there for four or five days now. Uh, it's crazy. And I think three things are going on. I think one, I think, I think the word disconnect that you used is, is a very good word because I think a lot of people 
in newsrooms still are not in touch with the real pain and the real suffering of 25 million Americans who are unemployed and underemployed and the, and the struggle to make ends meet there. So I think there's that. I, I think there's, there's something else, and, and the media critic Jay Rosen from NYU writes about this all the time, which is uh, what he calls savvy, which is that uh, it's just kind of uncool for journalists to take these people who want to change the world mm -hmm. uh, seriously, you know, that uh, I've seen a lot of coverage, like the New York Observer's coverage was basically to make fun of these people. Uh, you know, oh, these are the guys with the mask we saw a couple of years ago, weren't they? And, and to kind of put it down and not really try and get at the bottom of what's going on here. And there's that. And as far as the Tea Party, uh, you know, Keith, you and I both know the newsrooms overreact to conservative carping. They've been right. doing it since the days with Spiro Agnew. Uh, by the way, New York Observer, piece of crap. But all right, but moving on to the, the <laughs> last question, but just an observation. They, there's yes. no, they, they don't really fit into this, this explanation. Right. But what, is it possible that because those people don't look like uh, mainstream newspapers or, or television networks viewers or readers that they aren't old ladies with purple wigs or purple dyed hair and they aren't seemingly you know typical mid middle American Americans that they're they're in New York that that's is that what the suspicion is because you're not going to be able to sell that that videotape or a story about that protest to your audience well, I, th I thought it was funny that the biggest story in the New York Times during the five days of the protest, uh, the biggest local story, has been the uh, demise of Ray's Pizza. And so, so it, it, it is kind—it of, is kind of like the gray lady selling uh, nostalgia to its gray, mm -hmm. gray-haired readers. And I, I think there is an element of that, and, and maybe the fact that um, the Tea Party protesters were people who, like a lot of us survivors in newsrooms, are in our fifties. Uh, you know, maybe the fact that they looked like them. I think maybe that had something to do with it. I mean, I think there was also kind of a man bites dog thing about. The the Tea Party is that yeah. conservatives are protesting, whereas you know, they write off protests on the left that they should not. You'd think at least it would have made it into the traffic reports. Will Bunch of the Philadelphia <laughs> Daily News and the vast Hackley Dial Alumni Association <laughs> news page principally. Always a pleasure, my friend. Great, thanks. Always a pleasure, Keith. It was great. Thank you, sir. Gave him his first job, 1974. We're old guys. As the lunatic right continues to blame the unions for everything, we'll talk to the former governor of Michigan who helped unions and corporations and government to work together to save an entire business, the American auto industry. Governor Jennifer Granholm coming up.